for being here um today we're gonna learn we're gonna talk about a case that's new to the channel i'm still learning about it but i have been trying to learn about it for the past couple of days so at least you know i know a little bit of what we're talking about after i scheduled a live last night someone had reached out to me who personally knows one of one of the women and you know some of the people surrounding her um so we have a lot to talk about. Let me say hello to you guys first, and we're going to get right into it. At the bottom of the screen on the banner, you will see if anyone was to watch this live who happened to have any information, there's a tip line, um, phone number, and like an email address that you can tip. Okay, so let me say hello to you, and we're going to get right into it. Hey, sexy wild thing, McLovin, freaking Papa Elvis Claus. Hey, malicious intent. Hey, rainbow mom, B crumbs, mama four. Hey, Delena. Hey, Megan, Petunia, Harlot. Adrian, hey Creative Minds. Hey Maria, Carol, good to see you. Hey Sprinkled Donut, hey Kathy, hey Sherry, hey Good Nanya, good to see you. I'm interested to hear about this case. It's a lot. It is a lot, and it's scary because I don't know. It's just not looking good. What we know so far, um, it is scary. Hey Kayan. All right. Hey, Teacup, if I missed anybody, I apologize. Hey, Dreamer, let me go ahead. I had, Okay, so I had another article that I was intending on showing first, but it really, this article has a little bit more information. It goes into more detail about where they were headed and, um, you know, what exactly was going on. So we're going to start with it. The first one was a local news, but Inside Edition has put this out. We're going to look at this. Then I'm going to talk to you about some of the information that was given to me, you know, before this live started. Then I want to show you something from Twitter. And then I pulled up a timeline that was done. So I think we're just going to try to go through that and kind of discuss along the way. So, yeah, um, I haven't seen anything new in the last, like all of these articles are within like two to three days old. There wasn't anything out yet today, Monday. And yesterday there was someone on Twitter, a reporter who was at the OSBI, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, and there was no new updates yet. But hopefully this week, you know, we'll start to, there will, there will be more. Also, yeah, today is the eclipse. That's exciting. But it's scary. I can't find any glasses. I'm, I'm sitting here wondering, does anybody know what is the difference of looking at the sun any other time and then during the eclipse? Like, I don't know. <laughs> um, but OK, so let me go ahead and start. Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly disappeared in a rural area of Oklahoma near the Kansas border. Authorities investigating the disappearance of two missing Kansas mothers say they have found evidence in their abandoned vehicle that points to foul play. Veronica Butler was headed to pick up her two children at their grandmother's house last week with her friend Jillian Kelly when they disappeared in a rural area of Oklahoma near the Kansas border. So right in the beginning, it gives you, you know, more information than where you're, I'm finding in most other articles and from most other news agencies. Um, we're hearing where she was allegedly headed. And look, I'm going to tell you guys now, anything that we hear in news articles or um, word of mouth from people who know these folks and stuff like that, you know, is it, can you, 
determine that it's 100% fact? No, I don't think that we should, unless it comes straight from police, maybe court documents, um, police reports, whatever, then we can determine that as fact. But otherwise, you know, I don't know. I just like to warn, like to say that. So just to get it out there, Music City Mom, um, I'm proud of you, by the way, and I hope you guys are doing okay. Okay. Kelly, who is a preacher's wife, had reportedly tagged along to support Butler, who had been in the midst of a custody dispute with her ex. According to court documents, the father of Butler's children had been in prison for possession of a firearm and was released 14 days ago. So Veronica's baby daddy had been in prison for possession of a firearm. Um, Jillian, you know, was just there to, to be supportive. Um, I know that, well, we'll get into that more when I get into what was sent to me, but let me see here. I was trying to pull up the hyperlink that they had, but it won't let me. So let me just continue with this. Um, we're coming up on six days. These are two women no one has heard from, and it's extremely sad. Hunter McKee of the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation tells Inside Edition. We can say that what our investigators had discovered in and around the vehicle led them to believe that there was foul play involved in this. McKee says the butler's custody dispute is still being investigated. The urgent search for clues presses on for the safe return of the two mothers. Police have not yet named anyone as a suspect. So this person who had reached out to me, let me grab, grab it and I'll read a few things off of that. Let me see. So they said that Jillian was driving Veronica to meet her kids. Um, it was said in a prayer request given out by one of Jillian's friends that Jillian had been a guardian at Lightham for the kids. Now, this is just allegedly, like I said, she also volunteers for DCFS and CPS and has done foster services too. She's just a genuinely good lady. You know, there's a chance that Jillian may be a victim of circumstance. Um, this person says, I called the friend of Jillian's last night after seeing her doing a live on them this morning. I just wanted to know if she had any other insights on anything. She said, it's just heartbreaking as Jillian is truly the kindest, most compassionate woman she knows. The perfect pastor's wife. She did everything for everybody else all the time. Um, there was talk about the church Facebook page and where you can see some of the impacts that Jill, Jillian and her husband have had on the community. And I do have some screenshots of that. I'll show you guys in a moment or some pictures from there. She also said, um, let me see. No. The family believes whatever happened, Jillian was collateral damage and it wasn't about her. Don't know how involved in a church you've been, but the pastor's wife is a quintessential part of everything. They organize the events. Basically, they're the heart of the church when it's a good church. <laughs> they put in parentheses with some other things. You can see by these photos all from the last few months how involved Jillian is. So let me grab that and show you guys. these are just photos of, you know, from the church. Um, her husband, I believe. Jillian says family game night 2023 was a great time. The kids brought in 502 canned food items for Project Hope. The girls won and got to dye Jonathan's hair. And then Pastor Heath got to join in the fun too. That's her husband. And you see him there pumpkin ball. We had a great night. This was last August. Just very involved in the community and that kind of stuff. Um, oh, let me get back. Okay. Let me check on you guys in the chat. Hey, Okie Crime News. A bunch of people were digging deep in this case last night. Ooh, interesting. See, um, 
You know, it's unfortunate because when all these channels really like focus in on one case, because this particular, like, I'm so glad Sebastian's getting the coverage. He really didn't get that much coverage at first and he deserves it, right? Any missing kid does. But the unfortunate part is when these vultures like latch on to a case like that, they don't let it go. They're going to cover it day in and day out because it's bringing numbers. And then other cases fall to the sad and they don't get attention and these women are still currently missing too there's a lot of missing people out there right every single day tons more people go missing hey kbra kbraze i don't know what i was about to call you <laughs> So here's the timeline of events. But first, let me grab this screenshot I grabbed from Twitter. I think we're going to go over to Twitter as we can find on there is. But so, okay, to, to catch you guys up, we know that Veronica was in a custody battle. Um, well, this actually, this screenshot from Twitter will, um, let's, let's do a catch up before we go into the timeline of events. I want to read through this and then we'll do it. So this comes from Rose, which we've used, we've, read from her several times. She's a reporter who's over on Twitter. And she actually has re reported, like had jobs with different news companies and things like that. But she says authorities in Oklahoma are investigating the suspicious disappearance of Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. So Veronica's 27, Jillian's 39. I was seeing some reports that were trying to call them friends, but I don't believe that's what was going on here. I think Jillian, like I said, potentially could have been a support system for Veronica or the kids in this custody battle. And she was there for maybe support and safety. I'm not exactly sure. That is kind of me coming to my own conclusion. So I want to be clear about that. But um, <clears throat> they went missing on March 30th from Texas County. The two women went on a trip to pick up Veronica's children for a supervised visitation. They never made it to the location where the children were supposed to be picked up. The vehicle they were traveling in was found abandoned on the side of the road. Looks like the two women traveled from Hugoton, Kansas to get to this location. The father of Veronica's children has a known record for DV and previous gun charges to go along with it. Looks like he is currently in rehab under court orders. Jillian is the wife of a preacher and went along as emotional support and also a supervisor to the visitation. A gag order has been put in place so the media is restricted from putting out information at this time. This all looks scary as hell. I am very worried for their safety. No telling what has happened, but none of it sounds good at all. As far as I can tell, the children do appear to be safe right now. And then she attached a couple photos I want to show you. Actually, I made them bigger. So this is Veronica. She's young, you guys, 27 years old. And then Jillian and her husband, like I said, he's the preacher. Um, she's 39 years old. Hey, crazy mama. Has anyone thought they could have ran off together? Stranger things have happened. It's certainly possible. You know, I hope it's something like that. Hey, Iffy, hey, Foxy. That would be better than the alternative, you know. Hey, AMAC talking smack. Burnt grilled cheese. What? <laughs> okay. The world is a scary place these days. Like 2,000 people a day go missing in the U.S. I know the stats are absolutely scary and just unbelievable, truly unbelievable. Oh, I love you back, Foxy. I don't know what you were responding to me saying, but. Oh, Music City Mom, I'm happy to hear that about the stepdaughter. Okay, and then I think I missed, oh, you've been a member for 12 months, Claus. Thank you. Two many more years. Beautiful Alex, love you all. Thank you. Love you too. And I cannot freaking believe that. That's pretty crazy. Time flies. If it's foul play, that means we can't even rely on the buddy system anymore. How scary is that? Okay. So now that we've went through all of that, let me just, okay, Veronica, you know, 27 years old, 
in this bitter custody battle. Um, as Inside Edition says, she was headed to pick up her two children with Jillian Kelly. According to court documents, the father of her children had been in prison for possession of a firearm and was released 14 days ago. We have other reports. He's potentially in rehab. I don't know, but it is scary. Jillian, you know, wife of a preacher, very involved in her community, potentially uh, su supervising this visit um, and they're just for support. They go to pick up the kids and they have not been seen since the car was the vehicle was found and police believe that foul play is suspected based on what they found in that car. So let me look, go over here and look at the timeline with you guys. Hey, Sunshine Mafia. My May says they have six children between them. Hey, Bendy. Hey, Lucia. Okay. So timeline of events. Kansas women still missing. Police suspect foul play. Two Kansas women who disappeared over the weekend are still missing with investigators announcing Wednesday that they suspect foul play. Veronica, 27, Jillian, 39, have not been seen since they left together to pick up the children in Oklahoma. The car they were seen driving was found abandoned near a highway in Texas County, Oklahoma, and that is in the state's panhandle between Kansas and Texas according to previous USA Today reports. The Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation said Sunday they were asked by another law enforcement agency in the area to investigate the suspicious disappearance. The agency said they found evidence to indicate foul play based on a recent search of the abandoned car. So it looks like, you know, the county police or the town police reached out and wanted the state investigators on the case, which is a good thing. We are still searching for these victims and there are no arrests at this time. We ask that anyone with additional information to contact us, OSBI said in a post on X. Hunter McKee, a spokesperson, told USA Today that the investigation is ongoing. Additional information about the case was not made available Thursday morning. McKee said the women are believed to be in danger since no one has heard from them in days and their vehicle was last seen in a very rural area of the state as well. So here's the timeline of events so far. And then we'll just check out Twitter and see what, what the newest is on it. Hey, Ramblin' Rome. Hey, Jameson, good to see you. Well, Jameson, like I was saying, you know, I've wanted to cover this for the last couple of days. Yesterday, I wasn't prepared. Like, I need to read the articles and I'm going to read a couple times. I want to fully know what I'm talking about, actually grasp who we're talking about, what's happened. Um... So that's why I hadn't done it sooner. But it's unfortunate because there are so many cases that aren't being talked about. Um, it's it's just, I don't know. I don't even know, you guys. I don't want to get on my soapbox again in another live. But I, I will just say I have been so disappointed by what, by you, like just in general with um, true crime and stuff like that. So. I heard a lady earlier said she went past the car and it had a smashed out window on the driver's side. Hey, Selena. Okay. So March 30th, Texas County, Oklahoma, the Sheriff's Department post missing poster on social media, providing details about the women's physical appearance and photos. I think that is a hyperlink. So I just click the link and we'll go right back to the article. And this way we can see what they're linking that they're talking about. Always do that when you are reading these articles. Oh, for one, you know, always do your own, your own research and eat no matter how much you love a creator. Just know that just because they say it, it's not a fact. You got to find like other things to back up what you're hearing, right? So hopefully they're telling you where they're getting the information and you can 
discern from there. Like I said, I had some, you know, a few things that were told to me by a subscriber who is in the same social groups and stuff as these women. Um, but it's, this is just from, you know, a random person. So you have to keep that in mind. Now we're going to go look at the Sheriff's Department post. It says out of Texas County, 825 p.m. March 30th, endangered missing advisory. Um, but, you know, it's always important to say where you're getting stuff so you guys can go look too yourself. Like I get really frustrated with with this stuff sometimes. So sorry, but <laughs> let me just continue. Um Veronica was last seen in blue short sleeved shirt, denim shorts, and a pair of Hey Dudes. I love Hey Dudes. They're so comfortable. Jillian was last seen in whitewashed blue jeans, a long sleeve shirt, and tan or beige shoes. Um, Veronica has red hair and green eyes. She's five foot four. Jillian has brown hair, blue eyes, and she doesn't have her height, but she's 39. Veronica's 27. Or Jillian, did I misspeak and say Veronica? You guys see the poster. Let me not read all the details. The number is on in the banner. If anybody has came across these women or has any information, please call the number at the bottom of the screen, or you can email tips to that email. Veronica and Jillian were traveling together to pick up children. They never made it to the pickup location. Their car was located abandoned on the side of the road. Veronica has several tattoos, a Chinese symbol on her left forearm, a sunflower on her left shoulder. Jillian has a butterfly tattoo on her left forearm. Okay. Actually terrible for your feet though. Really? Dang, they're so comfortable. It feels like you have nothing on. I wish more people would give sources. They could at least link them in the description. I hate having to go search around looking for what people are talking about. I got to do better about linking mine. Hey, unseen. But I always try to, to give the sources. So people know you love them too. Here yeah, be. Okay. I don't know who's trying to come in here messing with crazy mama, but that will never fly in here. Just <laughs> let it go. Give it up. <laughs> we love crazy mama. Okay. So March 31st, Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation announced they were asked to assist in investigating a suspicious disappearance <clears throat> in Texas County. Wednesday, the OSBI said that based on the information obtained from the victim's vehicle, our investigators believe there was evidence to indicate foul play. It wasn't immediately clear what the connection between the two women is, but they were both traveling to pick up children. Now we know we have at least an idea of the possibilities of why they could have been together, right? Um, they never made it to the pickup location. Now let's go over to Twitter just to see. I'm hoping that some news comes out today. Um, you know, if they believe based on evidence found in the car, there was foul play. Hopefully there is enough evidence that will point to a suspect. And I think just based on the circumstances of what was going on in Veronica's life with this custody battle, that's red flags right there. So many times we see these cases stem from stuff like that. Thank you, B Crumbs. Hey, Rexy. I know, crazy mama. I've been sort of mindfully hanging back on this case. I look forward to catching up on it now. Awesome, Sandy says. Hey, hey Rainbow Mom, did you see my comment? Because you won the giveaway. And um, I've just been really shitty. I, I didn't. I took longer than I should have by choosing the winner, but with our vacation and everything. And even today, I'm just like, I don't know. I cannot get my, I can't get it together. I can't get my shit together. You guys, I'm just struggling, but email me because you won the, the wax melts. And if you guys haven't checked out nays melts, you should, because they are awesome. And there's a, a discount code in the, in the chat. 
<clears throat> awesome, Rainbow Mom. Okay. All right, so we're going to go over to Twitter, and I'm just going to type in, we'll try, we'll start with Veronica. Veronica Butler. We'll just, because I'm sure anything, you know, that would, it would probably have both of their names in it. We can just use one to kind of search around. No, that's okay, crazy mama. <laughs> okay, Music City Mom. Adrian, go home and help your parents. I love you, Adrian. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the latest. Well, let me show you the top. This is where the Rose account I was talking about. She used to work for, I don't know, was it somewhere out of Colorado? I cannot remember. It's been a while, but, you know, she just covers missing persons, missing persons, true crime. And she says, let it be. Is Mal still in here? Like this picture of her reminded me of you. It kind of looks like you. She's a beautiful girl. Pretty red hair, but not that it matters. It doesn't matter how someone looks, but. Okay. See, there's just not a lot out there about it. Let's look. This is the person, member I told you I saw on Twitter that was outside of the OSBI headquarters. She says, outside the OSBI headquarters in Oklahoma City, where the investigation into the disappearance of two missing moms is being handled. There are no updates from the OSBI as of Sunday, but that could change in a second. The search for answers in the case of Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly is ongoing, but the rumors here on the ground are swirling. We'll bring you more tomorrow on News Nation. Wow, I didn't realize that she was working for News Nation. I think I didn't expand. Per Coco News, ABC5, it appears this was not a willing incident on their own to have taken off to any or anything of that nature. But I think it's something more involved. Well, I said that all wrong. Said Veronica's pastor. He also added the community is working through the feelings of confusion and anger as it relates to not knowing what's going on or what type of events led up to their disappearance. This is just a perfect recipe for lots of rumors and stuff. There's not, a, if there was more attention on the case, it would be just as crazy as Sebastian's is right now. His rap sheet is miles long, someone says. Let's keep looking. Heading to Oklahoma, searching for answers in a mysterious case. More tomorrow on News Nation as we report on the two missing moms who vanished under suspicious circumstances in a very remote area. I'll take you to the scene. Let's look at this. Of the investigation this week with Chris Cuomo, Elizabeth Vargas, Banfield, and all the others at News Nation. So she shows her flight, their faces. This is what I wanted to see. Missing Kansas moms. The car was found. So they started in Kansas, possible route. The red is what they believe that was traveled and then the blue is where they were supposed to go. So they didn't quite make it to their destination. And then Hmm. I will be interested to see the scene of where the vehicle is found. Update with corrected date. On March 30th, Veronica Butler traveled to pick up her children for a birthday party. The children's father's family had custody of the children. Veronica was accompanied by Jillian, who was a monitor for visitation with her children. 
This is from Jennifer Coffendaffer. <clears throat> Excuse me. She says, and this is, you know, however, how, however you might feel about Jennifer Coffendaffer, she did work for the FBI. She, um, you know, I'll leave it at that actually, because I, I don't really have a lot of nice things to say right now based on the last several months. But um, anyways, she she says that on March 30th, the vehicle was found abandoned off Highway 95. We need to do some maps, I think. Um, I need to get Wolfie to help me and we can make some maps so we can get a, a better look at this. But according to the Oklahoma Bureau of Investigation, there was evidence of foul play in the vehicle. Jennifer puts in parentheses, a.k.a. blood. Now, could that be what it was? Sure. I don't know why she's jumping to that conclusion. I think that it could be other things, too. But whatever. Um, law enforcement has been tight-lipped and told witnesses not to talk. Veronica was in a heated custody dispute. The father of the children was purportedly in court-ordered rehab. Let me check on you guys. Yeah, it's rapper. I don't know why. I mean, I just don't understand. Yeah, exactly, K Braze. It's like, why do you choose a true crime chat to be the chat you troll in? What the hell is wrong with you in your life? Like, what are you missing? I feel like there's got to be some deep rooted, rooted issues if, if that's what you're doing. But whatever. Hey, Mel Mac. Yeah, for real. Okay. Yeah, we're going to make some maps. I'm going to get Wolfie to help me. She's really good with, I'm horrible, like with direction. I thank God for Google Maps. Thank God for GPS because I would never make it anywhere. I don't understand how in the old days people used to open up those big maps and like find their way to places with those. How do you do that? Like I need somebody a mile ahead of my turn being like, hey, turn <laughs> left. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh. I just, so I will ask her for help. <laughs> This woman is on the ground searching for miss, missing mom at custody exchange with supervisor in Oklahoma. There's a grandmother involved. Okay. If you see something, say something. I think that's about all that we've got. Um, people just speculating about what they might have found. For instance, you know, it could be many things. They could find um, the card with everything disheveled, the purses dumped out, or you know what I mean. There's other things that could lead to foul play other than blood evidence. Girl, I can read a roadmap. Well, you can come travel with me and help me. <laughs> GPS has saved our butts. Wish there was more focus on it. It is interesting. I need, I need more, but that, I think that's why um, I need to do this map so I can visually see. And, you know, otherwise, the rest of the things that we're going to, if there's, there's an order for, th it, police are really trying to keep things tight-lipped, which is a good thing. But I'm starting to feel like it does nothing but cause damage in these cases because then people start speculating. If this case was getting even a quarter of the attention Sebastian's got. Can you imagine the rumors and the people like I'm already seeing people trying to blame the grandmother who has custody of these kids? <laughs> like the grandmother who has stepped in and is I don't know if, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm here to support all the family until my channel is going to just support all families until police say not to, right. Or whatever. But this woman has taken those kids in, you know, so let's, I don't know. I just, I can only imagine the way that rumors would be swirling.
I remember MapQuest and people printing that stuff out. <laughs> Me, me, MJ, <laughs> Music City Mom on a Road Trip. Have you found anything about them finding a hammer? I keep hearing people talk about one, but I haven't seen confirmed anywhere. Nope, I haven't. Now, I've seen like speculation, like, like you're saying, but nothing official, no. Is there a theory of what may have happened to these two ladies, or does anyone here have a theory? Well, I'll tell you, if you missed the beginning, let me just read this again. So one of the viewers here is in the same social circle as these people actually attended, uh, a, I won't say what, but um, recently attended an event with the husband of one of these people, just in the same social circles, okay? Um, and she had reached out to me after she saw the live was scheduled. And one of her very good friends is good friends with Jillian, okay? And she says, she Jillian was driving Veronica to meet her kids. Now, like I said, this is just what we're hearing from people who are close to the situation. It's still not anything official from law enforcement, but it's we're kind of seeing it in other places too, in other reports, some of these things. Um, so she was driving Veronica to meet her kids. Um, <clears throat> she apparently, and by this person says that Jillian had been a guardian at Lightum for the kids. Jillian also volunteers for DCFS slash CPS and has done foster services too. She is just a genuinely good lady. So this person says, I called my friend last night after seeing you're doing a live to see if she had any other insights on anything. She said it's just heartbreaking as Jillian is truly the kindest, most compassionate woman she knows. The perfect pastor's wife. She did everything for everybody else all the time. She asked if I had looked at the church Facebook pages. That's where I can see some of the impacts her and her husband have had on their community. Um. Someone in the, you know, the, her family believes whatever had happened here, this was not about Jillian. She was more collateral damage. And they had mentioned, you know, all the pictures that showed how involved Jillian is with her community and her church and stuff like that. Um, and then they also go on to say, I don't know how involved in church you've been, which you know, for me personally, I'll just say I do believe in God. I'm not a huge fan of organized religion. That's neither here nor there. That's just my experience. But this person says the pastor's wife is a quintessential part of everything. They organize the events. Basically, they're the heart of the church. Now, we do know, and this came from Inside Edition. Let me go back to it if I have it. Hold on. So I think that there's like something if, as far as a theory goes, I, I won't give my theory, but I think that things are are lining up in a way that can't you can't help but wonder um, if Veronica may have been the target in this because Veronica was headed to pick up her children at their grandmother's house last week with, they say, her friend. We know that that's not necessarily the case here, most likely, um, when they disappeared in a rural area of Oklahoma. Jillian had reportedly tagged along to support Butler, who had been in the midst of a custody dispute with her ex. According to court documents, the father of Butler's children had been in prison for possession of a firearm and, and was released 14 days ago. And then we've seen other people report that Jillian was like, she was advising the visit, right? Or watching over the visit, basically. So that's, I think that, you know, I don't know. I hope that they're okay, but it is scary. And um, if the police believe there was foul play, then I can't help but believe that that's the direction this is going in. My mom still makes me print it out for her. Oh, my gosh. That is adorable. Hey, Lucky Spencer. All speculative until law enforcement says differently. Exactly, Tess. Ooh, yum, crazy mom. I want some Rice Krispie Treats homemade. 
So anyways, that's about all we've got. I don't, you know, I don't think it's helpful to sit here and supervising. Thank you, good Nanya. My brain was not working. I don't think it's helpful to sit here and kind of um, speculate too much, but that's kind of where we're at. They said sources in law enforcement said they found a hammer, but I always look for local stations. So to me, it's speculation until law enforcement confirms. Let me just do a quick Google search before we go. If there's anything new, I can't tell you how many times I've been like getting ready to do a live on something and there's a major change in the case, like five minutes before the live starts. Veronica Butler. Again, at the banner at the bottom of the screen, there's a number and, a, you know, all the tip line information. Yeah, everything kind of goes back to two days ago, four days ago. Not seeing anything new. I'm so tempted to click on Reddit, but I'm not going to do that with you guys. I'll do it in my private time. <laughs> um, I said advising the visit, supervising. What the hell is wrong with me? <laughs> my brain is just, I'm struggling to get it together, you guys. Again, I try, but it is always a hot mess express over here. Let's see what the independent has to say. And then I think I will let you guys go. Or I'll maybe chat with you and smoke a cigarette for a minute and just talk about whatever. But um, we'll wrap it up with this case. So what we know about the suspicious disappearance of two women in Oklahoma. I mean, 27 years old, you guys. Veronica was 27. That's a baby. That's a freaking baby. Like to me, I, I feel like when I was 27, that's really when I just started maturing. I was just starting to like see life really for what it was and stop living so selfishly. And just, I don't know, it's just young, man. It's unfortunate because yeah, it's grown, but not really, not when you think about it. Police are still searching for two Kansas women who were on their way to pick up children to take them to a birthday party with investigators now saying foul play is suspected in their disappearance. They vanished in a rural part of Texas County, Oklahoma. Both women are thought to be involved in a religious communities in Hugoton, Kansas, with Mrs. Kelly, with Miss Kelly being the wife of a pastor in the area. But he had recently taken up a new posting in Nebraska. There have been no sightings of the women since they seemingly abandoned a car that authorities believe they were traveling in. No arrests have been made, but investigators believe there is evidence to indicate foul play. Now, investigators are on the hunt to find answers to what happened to the women and what they have branded as a suspicious disappearance. Here's what we know about the case. The car that went, the independent, they always have like incredible, like when it comes to cases, they will link all these different articles. I feel like they do really good coverage um, a lot of times. But they say the car the women were believed to have been traveling in was found abandoned on the side of the road. After the OSBI assessed information obtained from the victim's vehicle, their investigators believe there was evidence to indicate foul play. The vehicle was found near Highway 95 and Road L, just south of Elkhart, Kansas, a royal community near the Texas border. Perfect, because now we can use that for our maps. I will work on that and I'll post it once we have it together. But at the time, the women were on their way to pick up children, as the Endangered Missing Advisory notice says. However, they never made it to that pickup location. No arrests have been made in connection to the case, but investigators are continuing to search for the women they have now labeled victims. The women were reportedly going to pick up Miss Butler's children to attend a birthday party when they disappeared. Tim Singer, Miss Butler's pastor, told ABC News. An anonymous person close to Miss Butler relayed similar information to KVI and said they were supposed to pick the children up from Eva, Oklahoma. However, OSBI would not confirm why these women were coming and going. There's a lot of shock and confusion in the community. We're expecting their return to Hugoton and to see their faces again, Mr. Singer told ABC News. 
Veronica and Jillian were described as acquaintances by Mr. Singer, although an OSBI investigator told NBC News they were presuming they were friends. So there we go. Jillian Kelly is the wife of a new minister at Willow Christian Church in Nebraska, according to their Facebook post. He previously was a pastor of Hugoton First Christian Church in Kansas. Please pray that Jillian and her friend Veronica are safe and they are found quickly. The post read, God, please bring these women home to their families that are so worried about them. The mother of Miss Kelly told K4 that her daughter is a mother of four and is loved by everyone and does a lot of volunteer work in the community. She currently works at sec as secretary at, at the church and runs all the children's programs. Mrs. Butler's former, former school is not far from where the abandoned car was found. So as a precaution, the school implemented a lockdown on Tuesday. Wow. The school superintendent said Butler was part of the class of 2015 and was a class of one that year, meaning she was the only senior graduating. I joked about her being the top of her class and, well, the bottom also, the superintendent wrote. An anonymous friend described her as being kind, good with kids, and loving gardening, cooking, and baking. Her stepmother and father separately told NBC News that the missing woman had been in a difficult custody dispute. Court records seen by the outlet show a custody case was opened in late March 2015 and closed almost a month later. Almost a month later. I tell you what, you guys, I am going to link this article because all of these interviews, if we had more time, we could sit here and watch um, the mother of Miss Kelly on K4 or the pastor, the pastor, let's see. No, I'm sorry. There was no one in that inter as a, that interviewed there, but there were a couple other. We have Veronica's stepmom and father interviewed with NBC News. So there's a few interviews that are linked in this article. So I'm going to drop this article in the chat so that you guys can go watch those interviews. And I will go watch them, too. I'm going to save it because the, it gives a better location of the vehicle so we can do a map. And then also I will listen to the articles or to the interviews in my time too, in my free time. Hey, Michelle, those poor babies. Can you imagine your mom just vanishing? No, I cannot. When my kids were little, we used to call that fuzzy brain thing half term hazy. Well, there you go. I'm half term hazy. <laughs> hey, PC. Hey, creative minds. I, I might have said hi to you, but in case. <clears throat> Let's, yes, let's smoke a cigarette and talk about whatever. I love that, and I don't even smoke. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. I think that I'm going to drop it again. Hey, Teresa, this article just seemed to have a lot of good information and a lot of other interviews linked and stuff. So I'll be interested to watch those and put the map together. But otherwise, that, that pretty much wraps it up. Um you know, I'm hoping for a miracle that they're found and everything's okay. You never know. Someone could be, there could be foul play. They could have been, and this is just complete speculation, complete bullshit that I'm making up right now. Just an example, right? They could have been taken from the car and taken to another location and they could be alive, right? And they, they could get away. You never know. They're, I'm just hoping for the best until we hear more. And I don't think it's impossible. And I'll be making that map with Wolfie and I've already included her and she hasn't even agreed to it. And I'll get that posted for you guys on the community tab. And I'm going to follow this one closely. I'm glad, like I said, that other cases get a lot of attention and I want to cover those cases too. But like, the day before yesterday, I did a live where we did some updates talking about Sebastian and Madeline. So many people are covering them nonstop. I feel wrong about even putting their name in the title. So I don't see a remedy of how I could cover them. I don't know.
for the record, had to mute the video when Allie started talking about church ladies to take a work call. So just uh, to give you a quick rundown. Jillian, Jillian Kelly, 39 years old, wife of a pastor, very involved in her community, fosters, does works with CPS, potentially um, a guardian ad litem and supervisor over this visit that over this visit that was going to be happening with mom and her kids. Mom is Veronica Butler. She's 27 years old, and she has been going through a custody dispute with a man who is known to be violent, who was recently released from jail. That's kind of the background. Did you see the parent? No, I did not test. Oh, my God. Oh, I seen one about a woman who was like forcing her at one case that I wanted to talk to you guys about just like maybe in a live with some other cases that don't have a ton of information. This is the thing when cases aren't covered very heavily, there's not that much information. But did you see the mom who was like forcing her daughter to walk to school like super far, like eight miles or something or like seven year old daughter? Hey, Melissa Jade. Let's go to Crime Online just to look while we're hanging out and see some of the other cases that are happening that aren't being talked about at all. You know why? Because when you're not talking about a case that there's like extreme interest in, the video is not going to do as well, obviously, right? But to me, even a video that does shitty, if it gets any eyes on it, like that could potentially help. You never know. But there are so many cases. Let's see. Oh, wow. Dad fixed his own death to avoid paying ex-wife over 100000 in child support. Y'all, I, I have no patience for a deadbeat dad. None. I ha none. Oh, my God. That just enrages me to my core. Don't, don't, don't even want to talk about it. No patience for pieces of shit like that. Don't even want to pay for the child you created. I mean, ugh. Mm -mm. The branding one, yes, I saw that one too. You had sent that to me. Let's see. Oh, I'm not even showing you this dude. <clears throat> Potential game changer audio found in accused Idaho killers. What? Prosecutors in accused killer's murder case said last week they found a, a game changer audio recording related to possible jurors in the case. Oh, that was about the surveys. Okay. Pennsylvania double murder suspect commits suicide on West Virginia Highway. Wow. In Charleston. Damn, that was like not, I used to go to Charleston all the time. That was not too far from where I used to live. Maddie's call issued for a disabled woman. Oh, my gosh. Disabled missing woman. This just breaks my heart when you see these silver alerts, like these older people who likely have dementia or, you know, God only knows. And that's out of Atlanta. Her name is Della Mae Stark. Okay. Milwaukee woman missing for a week. Car found burning two miles from home. Wow, you would think, you know, that probably needs some, that deserves some coverage. She's missing. Her car's been found. Her name is Sadie Carlina Robinson. She's only 19. What a beautiful girl. Mississippi firefighter shot dead by living girlfriend. Road rage victim dies from injuries after crash. Oh my gosh. Former high school classmate charged with death of pregnant Chicago woman, Florida mom charged with sending threats to an 11 year old girl over TikTok. Oh my God. You got to be kidding me. Massachusetts man arrested in the death of 17 year old girlfriend, Tennessee couple accused of killing toddler grandson on day after Christmas. Oh my God. Carson Brasher was found dead on December 26, 2023. Jeff and Amy Brasher were arrested March 29th. So they were just arrested. A grand jury indicted them. I'm going to look into that one. Hmm. 
Missing Georgia girl found in Puerto Rico. Oh, remember when we talked about the teen that was found in the bonfire pit, burned beyond recognition? Someone was indicted for that. Florida Keys pastor accused of raping unconscious teen caught after fleeing the state. A pastor. See, this is, that's what I mean. Just because somebody's in church, I don't, I'm not a fan of organized religion. I'm sure there are many good churches with people who truly care and are trying to do the right thing. There are just as many that are just making money and doing and using it to cover up disgusting behavior. There are as good and bad in, in all of these groups. But, ugh. Pre-med student, now I saw this, fatally stabs mother, I shared it yesterday, a beloved elementary school teacher saying, quote, she got on my nerves. That's what he said. She was an element, like, that's the post I shared yesterday, just talked about how devastated the school is to have lost her. Alabama daycare workers charged with abusing toddler girl. Mm-mm-mm. I just won't even say my thoughts because I have like some pretty about just got real nasty with it. <laughs> um, then remember we had I showed you guys this 22 year old Florida woman who posed as a teen arrested again for essaying multiple middle schoolers. Fake cop shows up at woman's house and tells her her husband was killed in Walmart shooting. What about this mom who's missing? And her apartment has been cleaned out, not by her or it's or it wasn't a plan with her family or anything like that. Anyways, there are just so many cases that are happening all the time that you literally never see. And it's it's depressing. When I was in college, I worked at my church. You would be shocked at some of the things that went on. I believe it. Why are people such jerks? There's some crazies out there. I mean, it's, I figured out like recently why I even like, because I was thinking, just sitting back, there's like three butterflies flying around beside me and they're so pretty, caught my attention and got me sidetracked. But I just kind of was thinking like, what makes us interested in true crime? And I know it's individual for each person, right? But for me, like some people are interested in forensics. Some people are interested in crime scene photos and some, not everybody who's brought to true crime is necessarily, and you have to remember that some of these channels are created because they have an interest in, in that not necessarily being like a voice for the missing or the victims or whatever. And <clears throat> for me, I definitely care about the victims and the missing. I mean, if you can't, I don't know. For me, I think little kids are like the, the most precious gift that we have on this earth. Right. And we need to protect them at all costs. They are our future um, and they are just so innocent. So that's part of what draws me to the cases I choose to cover. But the initial like what draws me to true crime, I think for me, I, I need to know what is going on. I want to be informed. I want to know what's out there when you walk out of your doors and you go out into society. Right. Um, and when you actually start looking and finding out what exactly is out there and how dark and just disturbing some people are, it's it's pretty wild to think about. Hey, Bonnie. Hey, MK. I love butterflies. Me too. Don't they say sometimes it's a loved one who passed on? Hey, Megan. that too. I want to be informed. Yeah. Me too. Why do you guys think, um, let's see, K-Bray says trying to figure out how to prevent them. B. Crumb says the why and the how to. Well, with other cases like Letitia, it's like you want to, it's almost like with Ted Bundy, you want to figure out like what makes them tick. Um, 
And I know that we cover a lot of Letitia stuff here, but I've never looked at that as the same as like what happens with these cases that get super high profile and get like Sebastian's is right now, because we're actually going through factual information. We're either going through, we've went through her prison records, the jail records, all of the case files, phone calls, and we never make it, I will never use like Gannon's name and picture for those videos because I don't want to disrespect Gannon. It's, it's more about the mindset of Letitia, but we're not just sitting around gossiping and making shit up and wonder what, Ooh, this or Ooh, that, or, you know what I mean? It's, it's very different to me. I don't see it as the same at all. Um, I got a comment that made me realize that maybe some people might, might look at it as the same, you know, and I just, I, I highly disagree. It's also, it's a closed case. It's to me, it's no different than, um, uh, doing a docu-series of getting in the mind of Ted Bundy. You know, you wouldn't, it's, it, it's not even about, it's not, that would not necessarily be about his victims. It would be more about him, even though you can have love for the victims, care for whatever, however you want to say it, you can, you can care about the victims, of course, and what happened to them, but also there's the psychological study of the monster that did it, that does those things, you know, and I think that can help in so many ways, even when it comes to preventing things like that in the future. Michelle, the last thing I saw was, and I talked about this in my live when I got back from the beach, um, I just didn't write her name in the title. So if you were looking for that, you wouldn't know. But the medical examiner says they're not going to release the cause of death or the autopsy. Um, there are still no new charges. And that's just kind of that. I just want to know how and why people can do things that would never cross mine and most people's minds. Oh, wow. Crazy morbid. But my granddaddy got to see Bundy's body after he was executed. Sebastian's case is a total circus. Oh, Bonnie, I hope you're okay. Exposure for the missing, mostly. I'm going to work on some things for uh, me and Bindi to go over with you guys today. I have to finish making the video of the last calls that she ever made. And... um then we have to work on the video calls. Hey, Bieber. Hey, Jonesen, good to see you. We're about to go. We're just kind of chit-chatting at the end now. We were talking about these two missing Kansas moms, which you know, there's not a ton of information, but there's enough to give us an idea that things are not looking good, which is scary. Um, but I went septic. I'm being watched by the best. Oh, my God, Bonnie. I'm glad that you're OK. Maybe Rainbow Mom, I'm considering it. I really am. You know why? Because I am sick and tired. Do you know how many times I sit back and I watch some of these people like that are, are fighting back and forth with people and they're like, responding to every single little thing um, or whatever. And I think, you know, there are so many times that I have just kept my mouth shut and let people say things about me and let people twist shit or talk shit or whatever and not respond. But I am about sick and fucking tired of letting people walk all over me. And I am about sick and fucking tired of being used, period. So... Because that's exactly what she who shall not be named did was walk all over me and use the hell out of me and Jen. I'm really thinking about it. To put it all out there is healthy. Yeah, and especially because there was a part of a narrative put out of what happened um, I feel like that was just rushed and put out because we found out about the email change, but I don't know. For me, it's like this. I always want to try to like, I still am going to do it. I still tell you guys and try to show love about the amazing channels. Like just what ones have been in here today. 
Melissa, Jonesen, Bieber, criminality. Um, and I know there's more, so don't let me forget any if there, <laughs> I don't want to not name, but you know what I'm saying? I want to keep shouting out the amazing channels, but I'm also sick and tired of being used by freaking selfish assholes. And I am not going to let that shit happen no more. Hey, Queen Bella. You are so right, Kay, and the makeup, it, like how it kind of turned into it. Well, it's to me, it's like true crime as we know it is shifting. True crime is no longer about court documents and interviews and phone calls and, you know, case records and arrest affidavits and and all of that stuff. It's becoming about the drama surrounding the case. And this, you know, the creators who just cover like the trauma with the creators, I find that really interesting. But these creators who are acting like they're doing true crime coverage while they're just speculating and guessing and throwing rumors out there about these victims' families, I mean, that is just as low as it gets to me. It really is. I don't like it. And it's it's upsetting to sit back and watch sometimes. It's becoming drama and view count. Just like, you know, oh, God. With Madeline's case, it was becoming a circus, you know, before this, the things that were being said about her, you know, oh God, it's just gross, 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 gross. But anyways, like I was really trying not to get on my soapbox. I said that like 30 minutes ago, my first two lives back, like both of them, I was just ranting and raving. And then today I came in, and I was like, I'm just going to talk about what's going on in the case, get all the information, put it out there and move on about my day and not try because like who the hell am I I'm nobody to sit there and tell other people how to run their channels and I know that but then again I also sit back and I just see like some really egregious stuff going on and how do you be quiet about it <laughs> it's oh it's frustrating you should do a little ranting on your second channel I might do that I may do that. Like I said before, I do appreciate the people discrediting the lies. Oh, me too. I, I love that. And I I thoroughly enjoy several channels that do that. The interview with the Gonsalves last night spoke on that topic, how much it hurts the families with these crazy stories the creators are making up. Well, they're the perfect person to talk on that. Look at all the things that have been made up in that case. And they've been bashed all to hell. Like I see things, of course, that are kind of like interesting to me that maybe someone might say. But at the end of the day, I just learned with Don and Candace, look at that. Look at this. Like summer's been missing almost three years. Everybody was convinced at the time I was convinced that they would be going. They would be getting arrested for what happened to her. I truly believe that. Then Don got arrested for that. And DUI and I'm like, OK, they're going to hold him until they have more. And then and it didn't happen. He was released. They're still out here. I feel like if there was evidence that they had part in this, they would be arrested. You know, and even if somebody doesn't look exactly how you think a mom or dad or stepmom or dad should look, who the hell are you? They are going through the worst thing in their life. I guarantee you my kids were missing. I, I would I would look ridiculous. I would be acting ridiculous. And it's just the facts. Oh, Bonnie. Thank you. That's very sweet. Unspoken words remain unheard. That's so true, K Braves. We will rant with you. Well, at least it's at the end. Um, but. Anyways, all right, you guys, thank you for being here and hanging out with me and talking about this case. Um, I will definitely see you tomorrow. I'm going to try. Well, we have, even though we are doing the Letitia stuff still, we've just got those video calls and the last call she ever made. I want to make sure to still do other lives about like today's live. Um, so I don't know exactly what's coming tomorrow. Maybe one, maybe two things. But regardless, I'll let you know as soon as I know. You want your kids found. Who the hell cares what people think of you exactly? And then after they're not found after so long, like look in Don and, Don and Candace, and then your other kids are taken. If that happened to me, I would be a drunk ass mess myself. I know it. 
So anyway, thank you all for being here. Thank you for listening to me rant on. Thank you for listening about the case. Thank you for joining the conversation. Thank you to the mods. You are incredible. I appreciate you so much. Don't forget today is the eclipse. Um, and yeah, I don't know yet, B crumbs, but I know that Jen and I are planning a call in a little bit to discuss and kind of work out what exactly and how we're going to do things. So as soon as I know, I will let you guys know. Um, Bonnie said, wait. Oh, I love and appreciate you guys. Yeah, don't forget Rainbow Mom. Um, Bonnie, the mods can drop the link, but just know that just being here is enough, truly. I just appreciate you being here. Um, but anyways, all right, you guys, thank you for everything. And I will see you tomorrow. And I hope you have a good day. And let me know how the eclipse goes for you if you're in the if you're in the zone to get to see it fully, let me know. That is interesting. And if anybody has an answer, please put it in the comments because I'm truly wondering why it's any different than looking at the sun any other time. I need to know that because I'm about to put on sunglasses and look at it. <laughs> I'm at that point but because I cannot find glasses. But all right, you guys have a good day. I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you for everything.